In today's video, I have a Techniques SLPG100. This is a single disc CD player, and uh, I have no idea what the problem with it is. It was given to me, so let's take a look and see if we can make this one work. So, we'll first of all see if it powers up. That's a good sign, it powers up. Let's see if it plays a disc. So I have a CD of carefully, carefully selected royalty-free music bakery cuts. 18 tracks to be exact. Let's see if this thing's gonna read the disc. So far it reads the disc. I should point out this is a, this is the classic CD. When's the last time you saw one like this? Right, a colored disc. The um, this is a very old disc. This is this disc is probably twenty years old. I've I've got some that are gold on top too, still kicking around. The thing with the old CDs, CDRs, is they have uh, a higher opaqueness for the areas that are not burned so they actually have a higher contrast um, ratio than the ones that are almost clear they look silver the dye layer is clear so these ones don't burn as fast they're not as sensitive it's an eight times disc versus like a 50 times disc because the dye is harder to, harder to burn uh, the laser can't burn it as fast as the super sensitive discs uh, can burn and these ones are actually more resistant to UV light exposure too. But you can't get these anymore. I got a couple hundred of them that I bought a long time ago before they uh, started putting that, that silly tax on in Canada. So the CD player has appeared to be working. Well, we got to play here and see whether it's going to uh, act up or whether it'll continue to play. Okay, a little bit of a skip there, but I'm actually bashing the unit quite hard. Anyway, I'm going to let this thing play and see whether um, there's a problem with it. I'll let it play and uh, we'll pick this video up as it continues here. Let it play and see if there's a, a fault. So let's just lift the top off this unit and take a look at the mechanism on this one. As you can see, it's having trouble reading the disc. It stopped playing. So, we have a reading problem on this. As it was playing there, it just stopped. And then it started playing again. So we tend, to, it looks like we have a either a focus problem or maybe a problem with one of the motors on this unit here. So we'll just see how well it searches other tracks. We have a skipping. As you can hear, we have a a skipping problem on this this unit. So we'll just remove the disc. We're going to take the top off the uh, mechanism here and just inspect the laser itself. Make sure that we're not just up against a dirty laser problem. Dirty laser lens. So this is our disc clamp assembly. Here's our laser. And unlike some of the techniques, this one is not a linear motor. This is a regular um, driven motor. One of the common problems with these particular players is this motor here goes bad. As you can see, it's not turning that freely. So we may be up against a bad motor on this. But let's just take a look at that laser lens. Doesn't look to be dirty, does it? going to 
release the front cover here. That way I can take the whole mechanism out <clears throat> to work on it. Mechanism comes out just like that. To unplug it from the main board. Now the CD portion can be worked on out of the chassis to remove these two screws here that hold the main board in place. board out by releasing these catches on either side. Now this is still attached to the optical pickup so you have to be careful not to damage any of the wires. The optical pickup is right down through here. But I just want to get underneath here. Uh, I'm going to release these wires here to drive the motors to give me a little more slack. I'll unplug the two plugs here for the motors. Actually, I probably don't even have to do that. But I want, what I want to do is I want to um, lubricate these, this screw here with some uh, lithium grease and make sure it's not sticking. So I'll just undo the plug. And I'll undo this one here. This is the switch. That way I can flip the uh, circuit board out of the way. I'm leaving it attached to the laser just because if I undo this connection here, I'm running the risk that any electrostatic discharge could damage the actual laser itself. Now, these motors are known for um, getting gummed up. So, with it unplugged from the circuit, See, this thing is not spinning as freely as I think it should. It seems like there's drag on it. Now, some of these did have a, a, a little grounding spring that was touching up against the shaft that will slow them down. But also the bearings go bad. And that one sounds like the bearings are going bad. If you listen to it, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but when I spin that, I can hear it. I think if we put power to this thing with an external power supply and spin that motor up, you'll probably hear the bearings. I think the problem with this is that this this um, this motor is going bad. That was a, a real common problem on these uh, Panasonic machines. Was that that motor uh, was a, a known problem? On if I connect the power supply to this motor, we'll be able to spin the motor up, and you'll probably hear the bearing start to get noisy hear it? that's the motor, it's bad when I, when I speed this thing up you'll hear it it'll start to scream What happens with these motors is the bearings start to wear out in them. And with a CD player, the disc starts out at a high speed because the laser is tracking the innermost tracks, right? A CD is read from the inside out. And as 
the uh, as this, as the uh, laser moves out to maintain a constant reading speed the disc slows down they start at about 500 and I think 520 530 rpm and it slows down to about 215 as the disc as the laser moves to the outer tracks on the disc now the problem that happens when these motors start to wear out when the bearings start to wear out is that they start to resonate and when they get to a specific speed they'll start to wobble and that resonation will travel through the disc and cause the disc to start to vibrate too and it then becomes hard for the laser to track it I think that's probably what's gone wrong with this one because you can certainly hear it when I speed up the motor hear how loud it's getting and if I put my finger on here I can actually hear or feel the vibration if I put a if I had a microphone I could plug in here and put down here you'd really hear it but this whole chassis is vibrating now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to successfully put any oil down onto the shaft usually you can't do anything because it's usually the bearing on the bottom that also goes bad not just the one on the top so when these motors are shot unfortunately they're shot so what I can do on this is I can put some lubricant on the gear here it's not going to be the problem but I can certainly I can certainly put some lubricant on that gear and uh, That will do that. Unfortunately, because the motor itself is, has failed, there's not a whole heck of a lot I can do to repair this machine other than change the motor. And the chances of finding a motor for this unit at this stage, because of the age of it, is going to be slim to none. So I think on this unit here, I'm just going to uh, throw it back together and we'll, we'll put this thing away as a parts machine. The optical pickup is probably still okay. I don't have another one of these machines to steal a motor out of, unfortunately. Uh, if I come across one, though, I might be able to... Uh, if I come across a, a, any, any of these flat motors, they're, they're pretty much all the same. If I can come across one of these motors then I uh, may be able to do something, but I think what I'll do now is I'm just going to put it back together and uh, we'll see if lubricating the uh, the screw, the worm screw there has made any difference. It, I don't think we'll see any difference because I'm pretty positive that the fault on this is a spindle motor. It was a very common failure on these units when I was servicing them I changed a ton of them and Panasonic sold it as the entire optical block they called it the uh, what do they call it sled assembly it was the motor and the optical block it was sold as an assembly they did not sell the motor separately because the only way to change that motor is you've got to pry this pulley off the, this the um, the disc table has to be pried off to get to the screws that are underneath there that hold the motor in place and by removing the 
shaft or by move, removing the disc table you um, run the risk that you'll never get your alignment back right if you pop this thing off like this like I just did lubricant underneath there but see here are the screws that hold the motor in place When I had the unit upside down and I was running that thing that some lubricant has come out of this bearing because the bearing itself is uh, is worn. So I think when I had the unit upside down, lubricant that was in the bearing has poured out. stick this back in here and see whether it's done anything oops it help if I plug things back in Same problem. It'll eventually kick in, I think, but it won't play the whole disc. It'll play a bit, and then it'll, when it gets to a certain speed, it's going to uh, fail. So there it's playing. What's happening is you can probably see the disc is, is not you know it's wobbling slightly that's because the bearing itself is worn out so this player unfortunately is uh, one that will not be economical to repair and it's mine so I won't be uh, proceeding with this unit unless I come across another optical pickup that I can salvage for it if I come across an optical pickup that I can put in this one, then uh, I'll revisit it. But for now, this one's going back into the uh, parts machine bin. Yeah, yeah, that goes underneath there. That's where that goes. Okay, anyway, that's it for this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.